Hello, uh, I'm Colleen Carney and uh, I'm here to talk to you about a project of mine called Doze. Um, and it is a, let me just share my screen here. It is a sleep app um, for those who are aged 15 to 24. I'm gonna show that with you. I'm gonna share that with you, I should say. There we go. Okay, here we go. Move me out of the way here. So um, Doze is a project um, that we developed because teens have sleeping problems, and so do young adults. And, um, and, and one might say, well, what's the big deal? Well, the big deal is two thirds of them have it and we've got difficulties with mental health as a result, um, as well as um, difficulties in school, difficulties functioning, and then they're also at risk for uh, increased suicide as well as car accidents. Quality of life is also an issue. So we should care um, and be able to help. And you know, the good thing is, is that people like me can't help. So sleep specialists know clearly how to address this issue, but there's not a lot of me out there and so access is really important and what's really interesting is that many uh, young adults actually are not even trying to seek me out they're not even talking to their family doctor they'd rather find solutions on their own and they tend to um, prefer digital solutions so i wanted to um, find a way to eliminate the need for me so in integrate me into the app and um, and as far as um, what teens and young adults might want in a sleep app, I wanted to ask them to design it. So that's what we did. This is a fancy graphic that um, I use to explain how these kinds of grants work. So um, at first I had this um, app that was developed in concert with um, Ryerson's uh, Chang School. So through the Chang School, anybody uh, inside or outside of Ryerson can take my sleep course and they use this app all the way through the course to learn about their sleep and about concepts in sleep and it works really well. So I was pretty excited about it. And uh, so I then uh, applied for funding, took that app and, um, and conducted some user testing sessions to see if they liked it. And here's the data for that. No, they didn't like it at all. So I, I thought, all right, um, I'm just going to ask them, what is it that you want in, a, uh, in an app? And it's what we call user-informed redesign. So um, we've got people who are 15 to 24 years old interacting with the app, giving feedback, we change it, then they give feedback on that, and so on until everyone's happy. And then we conduct a clinical trial, and again, here's the data. They sleep better, which is good, right? They have better mood. Um, they feel more energetic. They thought the app that they designed was easy to understand, easy to use. They were satisfied with it. They thought it was really quick, like it was a low burden to complete a sleep diary in the morning. Great. So we know that it's effective. Um, and we've got one ready to go, which I'm about to show you. And right now we are in this phase, and that's why I'm sharing this with you, what we call dissemination or uptake. We want people to start using it and spread the word to use it to other people. Um, I, I'm officially, I have a lot of partnerships and people I'm sharing it with, but I think that one of the most effective ways to do this is to um, get people to use it they like it, and then they tell somebody else about it. So that's what I'm hoping that you'll do. Um, so the interesting thing about Doze is you don't have to have a sleep disorder. It's just a way to improve your sleep. Um, you essentially keep track of your sleep in a, a series of questions that I'll show you. It takes you less than five minutes. You complete this um, log of behaviors in your experience for two weeks. We provide lots of um, prompts and reminders to do that in case you're worried that, um, that you wouldn't do that. Um, people do though. And, and at the end of it, then we give feedback. And we give feedback on that specific person's sleep and habits. And then that way you can decide, well, well, based on what they recommend I should do, what do I wanna do and how do I wanna go about doing that? So you're gonna go ahead with the input from your sleep. 
with your data and set goals that are specific to you. And, uh, and then you will um, try this plan out for two weeks to make sure that you're happy with it. If you're not happy with it, you may change the goal. You may lessen it a bit, you may make it more stringent, you may scrap it all together and move on to a different um, area that we give you feedback on. So we call it the one, two, three method um, of improving sleep. So um, some of you may have actually been part of the trial um, because we did it here at Ryerson, but in the community as well. Um, and I don't wanna to spend too much time on it because I already told you the results, but I do wanna say one thing. Um, I told you you don't have to have a sleep disorder to use it. You may just wanna improve your sleep. Um, most people who used this app actually had pretty significant sleep problems. Um, they were above a cut, clinical cutoff for insomnia, but three quarters of them. They're above, most of them were above a clinical cutoff for fatigue. Um, a lot of them complained of symptoms that were really suggestive of having a mental health issue as well, but virtually none of them, 93% were not seeking treatment. So it vindicates, uh, or it provides support for my idea that maybe we should just put the solutions in, in people's hands then. Uh, if they're not gonna ask for help, Maybe they might seek it out in this way, and I was pretty happy about that. Just to give you an idea of what's going on, um, after I give you feedback on your sleep, um, you decide what goals to set. Most people are going to set a goal of um, reducing the variability with which they wake up in the morning um, or go to bed at night. And the reason why is whenever you vary that from night to night, say it's 10 o'clock one night, 12 o'clock another, 2 a.m. another, 11 o'clock another, um, you, your body um, acts in the exact same way it does and produces the same symptoms as when you have jet lag, but without traveling. So when that happens, you can expect to have difficulty sleeping, but during the day, you're going to feel pretty crappy. So two thirds of people wanted to set a goal of reducing their jet lag. Um, this particular person says they want to limit their variability in less one hour. Um, they also had another goal here. I plan to attempt to nap on days in which my sleep efficiency is greater than 90%. You would need a lot more information to know what that means, but this person has got, been given feedback that when um, they're, uh, they're asleep almost the entire time that they are in bed, it suggests they need a little bit more time in bed. For some teens, that's not an option. Um, and so napping for safety for some is an important goal. Now, having a goal uh, and being able to achieve it are often two different things. So we provided lots of tips throughout that you can select what you want. The most popular one uh, during our research study was um, people wanting help winding down in the evening. Is that something you would want help with? Um, then you'd probably want to access this module. I'll actually show you. 50% of people were accessing that tip. Um, here's one uh, tip. If you're going to go to bed very late, you may be too sleepy to complete your routine. Try to return to the routine the next night. Um, this is a, a wind down period, um, like having a wind down period of an hour. And if you're going to be working right up until the time you go to bed every night, it doesn't allow you to wind down and then you can have issues. So this one is saying, um, that, um, that if you are unable to do it one night, don't kind of scrap the whole week, um, try something else. Um, there's lots more tips. This sounds like somebody actually had a time management issue and that's why they were, um, that's why they were completing that particular one. I'll move my face here so you can see the data. I mean, you know what, this is just basically means that people did well. If you had a sleeping problem, you became a good sleeper by the end of the study, which actually is pretty amazing, given that we're not actually looking for people with sleep disorders to do, to try it out. And yet um, we had a, a pretty tremendous impact. Um, generally speaking, people fell asleep faster. They needed less naps because they weren't sleepy. Um, their sleep was uh, uh, more efficient. They spent less time awake in bed, which is good. They tended to decrease the variability of when they went to bed. They attempted to decrease the variability of when they got up in the morning, and they did, but it wasn't statistically significant. So that one last finding 
we, we would hope to improve. Um, and their quality of life improved. So um, I'm just going to, hang on a second, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen for a second. And then I'm going to share it again, but I'm gonna to go to the actual app if I can find it. So I wanna show you what it looks like. Oh, hang on a second. Okay, so I have just opened this up. You see it's dozeapp.ca. Um, so we're looking at it from a laptop point of view. Um, normally people are gonna look at it on their phone or their iPad usually. Um, so again, um, this is get a better night's rest. It, it uh, helps you learn about your sleep patterns, make changes to improve. Tells us a little bit about us at Ryerson, gives you some um, resources and some troubleshooting. But let's go right to trying the app. So let's see, I think I actually have, let's see what my goals are. Um, so let's go to yesterday. Let's see if I've got my results. Um, okay. So um, at the end of my um, monitoring my sleep, it says it's time for me to make a sleep plan. And it's given me some feedback. So I admittedly have pretty good sleep. So I actually only have two issues that they want me to address. One is jet lag without traveling. And the other is um, ingesting sleep interfering substances within two hours of your bedtime. So now what if I don't know what jet lag without traveling means? I can click right on it. And it says, yeah, you can suffer from jet lag without leaving your home. And you can feel tired, have concentration problems, mood problems, sleep problems. And then you can go right through this module. Usually we have some quizzes in here. Um, I'm gonna go back here because you don't need to see everything. And I also had an issue with um, sleep interfering substances. I'm trying to think of what it was. I think it was a glass of wine I was having before bed, not a huge deal. But enough that um, I have to decide whether or not I wanna make a a, um, a change. So let's see if I need any tips. So um, there's lots of tips and um, what if I need help winding down or turning my mind off at night? What if I'm a night, night owl and I have an early bird schedule? What if I have trouble getting up in the morning? What if I have trouble staying awake during the day? What if I'm exhausted? These allow me to take a look at different tips. Um, the sleep diary itself, Let's see if I can find that. I can actually do one because I forgot to do one this morning. So again, this would really be done usually on your phone, but you can do it anywhere you want. At what time did I get in the bed? Last night was, um, it was 10. Um, but I watched something on TV, so I didn't actually attempt to fall asleep until 1030. It's just what they're asking me here. How long did it take me to fall asleep? This is a guesstimate, right? They don't want you to be looking at the clock, obviously, just a guesstimate. And I did not, actually last night it took me a long time to fall asleep, which is unusual. So it did take me about an hour because I watched two modern families. That's how I know. Uh, did I wake up? Um, no. I didn't wake up in the middle of the night, I don't think. When did I wake up? Oh, I know this was six. That was not my favorite. Actually, it was 6.15, I remember, because the dog woke me up and I was not happy. And then what? Uh, when did I get out of the bed? Um, I tried to stay in bed longer. The puppy did not really want me to do that. So I got out of bed at seven. Okay, this is reminding me to complete it within two hours of getting up, otherwise the results are not valid. So my data is not really valid. Um, so it, it's gonna give me a reminder tomorrow morning to get this done. Did I eat, drink, or smoke any sleep interfering products within two hours of my bedtime? Yeah, I did have a glass of wine, which I was trying not to do, but that's all right. And then it gives me just the summary, make sure that it looks good. And it does. 
Um, oh, I'm killing it. That's fantastic. So I've got three days complete. I've got 11 more days before it's going to give me some um, pretty structured feedback. So I'm going to leave that here right now. So remember, it's dozeapp.ca. I would love for you to check it out. Um, to sign up, uh, you just need your email and, uh, and you create your own password. Try it out for two weeks. Get the feedback. Decide if you need to make any changes. Maybe you don't. Maybe you have good sleep. Um, that would be fantastic. A lot of people are sleeping even better during the pandemic because there's not a lot of um, um, pressures uh, on them in terms of when they have to get up and so on. You may be the exception of that, though. And uh, so check it out. And uh, thank, you for, um, thank you for watching and thank you for your interest in Doze. Bye.